Of course, the Bible says in, in Romans 6, stay here in 1 Peter chapter 2, Romans 6, 23, and Ephesians chapter 2, talk about how salvation is a free gift. The Bible says, um, for the wages of sin is death. I don't know why my, <laughs> like one of the easiest verses you say probably more often than any other verse, like ever is, uh, you know, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. It's a gift. And this is one of the reasons why we like to celebrate Christmas by giving gifts, because we received a free gift when we're saved. We're celebrating Jesus Christ. We give gifts uh, to show that fact. And of course, in Ephesians chapter two, the Bible says, for by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. God has a gift for us. And again, it's not cheap, it's very expensive. However, it's 100% free. Uh, John 3.16, of course, the most famous passage in the entire Bible, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And this is the first point that I wanna make about the expense of this gift. It's for God so loved the world that he gave. So this is his gift, this is what he's giving. He gave his only begotten son. And I like trying to, to point this out oftentimes when I go out and preach the gospel to people. What's the gospel? The gospel is the good news. The good news that there's hope. The good news that you could be saved and go to heaven. And point out to people that God actually loves them. You know, many people we talk to, they might not feel like God loves them. They might be going through some hard times. They might, they might have never had very much going good or so it seems in their life. And, and everything seems to be going wrong. But you know what? It's important to point out God loves you. And I, and I often will demonstrate this, especially if there's someone I talk to that has children, you understand this even more, but anybody can understand the concept. It's not that difficult to understand. And, and I, I like to point out to people how, you know, think about what the Bible says about God giving his only begotten son. Imagine you have one child, one son, you know, you, you, you you're going to love that son. That son's going to mean so much to you. And then to offer up your son as a sacrifice to pay for somebody else. Even just offering up your own child to let them go, that's a big deal. That's a, that's a huge, that's a monumental sacrifice. There's something that, that money can't pay for. The love that you have between your own child. There's no amount of, there's no amount of money that anyone can give me to take any of my children from me. No amount. They're priceless. They're precious in my sight. And any good parent, that's going to be the case. You're going to love your child to the point to where, look, I don't care what you're going to try to give me. That's my child. I love them and, and I don't want to give them up. But the fact that God was willing to give his only begotten son as a sacrifice in order to save someone else. Now, that's a noble thing. We might think that, well, I might be willing to sacrifice myself for someone else. And that's a good, you know, there are people that do that. There's people that put their lives on the line and, and will, will sacrifice themselves to pay for something else. It's another thing to sacrifice your child for someone else. Now, maybe there are still people that would do that. But we need to put this in the, in the understanding and the context that the Bible says, but God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And the reason why that's so important is that here we are, we're people that we don't deserve anyone to be dying for us. We don't deserve that much good to be done unto us because we're sinners. Because we have a God who said, don't do this. Don't do that. I want you to do this. I want you to do that. And we're not, we're going to do any of those things. Definitely not before you're saved. You're not, you're not doing what's right. Yeah, yeah, you may keep some of the commandments, but you're, you're overall, you're breaking what God said not to do, and you go out and do them. So here's someone that maybe you blaspheme God. Maybe you've, you've done whatever, right? But God still loves you enough to, to sacrifice his, own, his only begotten son for you. Like, that's a lot of love. Imagine someone, you know, you've got your son and there's someone else in a really bad condition and the only way you could save them by sacrificing your son. But this person, they've talked bad about you. Maybe they've stolen from you. They've, you know, they've done all, they've given you all kinds of reasons for you. I don't want to do anything for that person. 
And you expect me to give my only son for him? No way. I mean, that's how probably everybody would feel today if, if there was an earthly situation. Why? Because our love isn't quite as great as God's love is. But we need to remember the sacrifice that was made. This is one way of demonstrating that sacrifice that was made in order to pay for our sins. It's a big deal. And add on top of that who Jesus was.